Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Ed. Today, we're going to be talking once more about Sundial Cannabis. Now, Sundial Cannabis, I covered so many videos on it, but on my Twitter account, this one received some attention recently, and the price point has dipped to almost a new 52-week low. Well, 52-week low is 42 cents, but you get to see the chart. It hasn't reached this level ever since February. So almost an entire year, actually. So we're going to discuss a little bit on that, on the technical analysis and where we can see this going. And we're also going to give you a quick summary about this company uh, in case this is the first time ever you hear about it. You can skip to the technical analysis if you'd like. But Sundial. Sundial is a Canadian cannabis pro uh, company and they specialize in multiple things and they keep acquiring different companies like Spirit Leaf here, for instance, acquisition for retail cannabis networks. And they also had different collaborations as well with either extracts, also getting into the drinks for cannabis or, or uh, yeah, cannabis drinks or whatever, and also acquiring different companies underneath to expand based on the money they raised through the stock price, jumping all the way up from where it was, I believe at some point it was around 10 cents or 20 cents, um, and all the way up to around $4, raising some offering, raising some money, and they really raised their capital quite nicely. Now, a quick thing on the corporate presentation will give you an overview about who they are quickly. So their enterprise value is around 700 million. Their market capitalization is $1.8 billion. They have around $570 million of unrestricted cash and their debt. They actually uh, paid off all their debt thanks to the shareholders in retail really pushing this price up and they were able to pay their debt through shares and other things. Um, now, shares outstanding. There's $2.1 billion dollars. A proven management record of improving cost discipline and achieved positive adjusted EBI TDA for the first nine months of 2021, which was huge. And if we reach in this last month, as we are in December, a positive uh, basically track, you might have the first ever year this company does on EBI TDA, and that would be a milestone to remember. Now, a bit of the things that you might want to look at. So the adjusted EBI TDA in this quarter was $10.5 million positive compared to a loss of $4.4 million in the last quarter. They also have acquired Nova Cannabis and they are a leading retailer with 71 locations across Alberta, Saskatchewan and Ontario. And they employ a discount oriented retail model focused on providing high quality products at the best price. So quick here, um, yeah, so Alcana is also a part of uh, this company for Nova Cannabis. And right here it says enhanced exposure with investments in Nova, Nova publicly listed pure play cannabis retail operator. I might say acquired, I meant acquired a share in Nova company. Now, the other thing here that we do want to talk about is the kind of footprint. So the footprint for Spirit franchise crosses almost in every province except for Quebec. And also uh, a little bit of the territories in Canada. We have provinces and territories in cases you're watching this from the US and geography wasn't your strong realm. Uh, but anyway, there's no judgment here. Anyway, Spirit Leaf corporates as well. You get to see that it's mainly in the prairies as well as in Ontario. And when you're looking into Nova Cannabis corporates, it's in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and as well Ontario. But it misses the majority of Canada. But they still make a good amount of profit nonetheless. You're able to see Nova Cannabis here, the Canada's largest cannabis retailer. They're just uh, really into certain areas in Canada rather than being spread apart, which has its also positive when uh, coming in and controlling their expenses. So sometimes you do want to control your network within a certain realm. So their brands and portfolio includes but not limited to Top Leaf, Sundial, Palmidio, and Grasslands. And you're able to see their percentage right now for Sundial goes under dried flower as the majority, around 52%. Vapes around 14.6 and pre-rolled around 18.7. Others are falling under the 14.7% umbrella. Now there's another thing that you might have forgot about it. Uh, the Sunstream Core. And this one here was basically a capital kind of investment strategy to invest in the industry itself and also uh, with as well partner, the SAF group. And the idea here is that the world legal cannabis market approximately is doubling or more than doubling around 150% between 2020 and 2025. And Sundial has a good amount of cash just laying out because of offerings and retail market. And so they're going to go back and invest into the Canadian market and international cannabis market in order to capture as much money uh, with that growth rather than just it be sitting as cash and 
uh, you know, cash with inflation, you're actually losing if you're just having cash on the side. Uh, at least this is how the company as well looks at it. Now, another thing I do want to take a look at is the short interest as a percentage of flow. It's only around 15%, even though I say only, it's still quite significant. Nonetheless, they have around 2 billion number of shares of floating shares. Their price over sales is currently 35, but this is based on last year's valuation. So I can't wait till they get the positive numbers for 2021. And the price over sales would look a lot better here. The price of a book is 1.19, which is undervalued compared to SP500. Now, another thing I do want to talk about is even with the drop, there's not much news about it. I thought maybe a short selling report or someone with a bit of an influence on Twitter or retail mentioning it out, but there wasn't much of that anyway. Institutional buyers, you're able to see on the 26th, for instance, Portfolio Developed World ETF added around 1.2 million shares of this company. Uh, different ETFs have actually picked up this company as well. There's nothing major that we can report on from institutional buyers. Short shares availability is almost around 10 million at 5% short borrow fee rate. And the short volume ratio is around 50%, but that's kind of almost a standard. There's nothing significant that we can see about short selling activity here. Now, before moving on towards technical analysis and discussing this a little bit further, if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to click the subscribe button and leave notifications on. And also, don't forget to drop a like and you can join us on our Discord. Now, I did also cover Sundial versus Hexo. Um, I do like both. And at this level, Sundial does look a lot attractive than it was before when I made this video. But if you would like to see some of the comparative in terms of competition, Hexo is another video versus SNDL to watch. But definitely these two have really got into the market itself. They don't compare almost on the same level. It's harder to compare them. But let's move on towards technical analysis and continue our focus on Sundial. Now, from a technical analysis point of view, Sundial definitely has some interesting things that are happening at the current moment. So first off, on the moving average bands, you're able to see that they've actually crossed. The 10SMA crossed from above to the 30MA, and that might actually be a bit of a dangerous level that it is currently at. The average directional index, or the ADX, doesn't show you anything significant at this level. Only percent R, which is very similar to the relative strength index, is showing that this stock is highly oversold, meaning it might be a good time to buy, but there's more supply than demand at the current level. It doesn't take a genius to see it from $1 all the way down to around 56 cents. Uh, that's a massive drop, around probably, what, almost 50% almost on that time. Because you got to consider as well uh, the fluctuation and volatility as well. So this is not far off from 50% as 50 cents, but it's around probably 40% to be accurate. Only percent R, uh, yes, we kind of covered that already. MACD is one of its worst at the current level. Uh, I mean, we haven't really gotten back to around the 22nd of June. But nonetheless, this stock is really seeing some negative strong momentum and that's a bit dangerous and we need to see some reversal in this week before it continues to slide downwards now momentum is a negative 0.35 the last time it was at this level it was probably down to the 21st of june but really it was back to the 26th of february around this massive drop from four dollars all the way down to around a dollar now, the next thing is the stochastic fast and stochastic slow. Both are actually almost touching on the bottom, suggesting this might be an interesting time to buy this stock. Uh, it's currently almost at the flat level, and that's an interesting thing in my own opinion. But the other thing we do want to talk about is Sundial's general moving averages. We're able to see that this stock is anticipated to trade between 78 cents and 64 cents. Currently, it's on the bottom, which is a weird thing for the stock. But the Bollinger Bands are between 87 and 54 cents. I do anticipate it to catch up within the moving average bands, but the moving average bands are dipping downwards, but it might actually see a bit of a bounce in the next few days or so. Now, on the Fibonacci retracements, you're able to see that the first resistance, if we do take the 14 cents as a bottom, is at 104, 160, 205, 250. The support is at 14 cents. But now I'm just going to highlight some important ones. So for instance, the, the critical support is 55 cents below there, 52 below there. You're looking at 43 cents, 31 cents, 22 cents, 17 and 14 cents. Hopefully we don't see these levels once again. Now resistances, there are a few such as on 62 cents and then 71 cents and then going upwards to 74 cents, 80 cents 
and then up to 91 cents 105 and then upwards to 135 148 going to 163 176 and you get the point anyway a massive drop for the stock this is in my own opinion it could be more of a negative trend uh, this talk, especially in the cannabis industry, nonetheless, have seen somewhat of a drop overall, um, but it's on a good track. So hopefully with the end of the year results, with the first ever positive EBI TDA, this might really reflect a positive run. Now, there's been a lot of talks before about Sundial and US markets and cannabis legalization, but... With anything that happens within the Senate in the U.S. and the government in the U.S., it takes forever. And this is not just subjective to just the U.S. government, but generally governments overall. So I wouldn't say hold your breath on it, because if you do, you're probably just going to uh, run out of air. But nonetheless, this could be something as well, another milestone in the back burner, even though it's not a priority at the current level. We do remember that it actually did pass the House and then went to the Senate to be read and passed. But every now and then, something gets passed and just gets thrown in the back burner, gets burned, and has to be replaced. So this is exactly how it feels for the legalization of the U.S. for the legal market. But nonetheless, this company here has pulled itself back from year over year. And I don't think that it's worth currently back going to uh, the low double digits. When I say double digits, I'm meaning like 0.14. Uh, that's not even double digits. That's not even a single digit. It's not even one dollar. But nonetheless, uh, around three decimal points, 0 0.138, I don't think it's worth year over year. It has really pulled itself a lot better. And being at this level is a little bit of an overkill in my own opinion. What do you think is going to happen here? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that give us picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day